The Australian Farm Institute has just completed research on agricultural extension. How has agricultural extension changed over time? Well, historically, agricultural extension in Australia, particularly in the post-war years, was largely delivered by state government agencies, Department of Agriculture, um, and, and the, there used to be extension officers, district agronomists, district livestock officers, would visit farms, would talk to farmers about problems and about new technologies. Um, probably in the last 15 years, uh, that's largely disappeared. Uh, state governments have withdrawn from certainly providing on-farm extension. Um, they still do have some extension officers that work more with groups, um, but even some of those are disappearing. And we've seen the emergence, particularly in the grains industry and in the intensive livestock industry of fee-for-service um, advisors, so in other words, agronomists or specialist advisors who come to the farm on a fee-for-service basis and provide information about new technologies or new management systems. How important is the private sector in agricultural extension in Australia? Um, the private sector's importance varies a little bit. In the grains industry, for example, it's, it's, it's very dominant. Um, there's about 50 public extension officers involved in the grains industry in Australia and about 2,500 uh, private agronomists either associated with uh, a chemical reseller on the one hand or a fee-for-service individual who uh, is employed directly by farmers. So uh, those numbers really highlight the, the shift in the balance that's occurred from public to private advisory services. What lessons are available from overseas? Um, Different countries have different models and I think the first thing we learnt in looking at overseas models is that often those models are shaped depending on the circumstances of that country. So if you look at Brazil, it has a very much two-tiered extension system. Um, the public extension system is very much focused on um, the small-scale farmers, the subsistence farmers, um, and the private extension system typically runs through uh, grower cooperatives is very much focused on the large-scale grain sector. So um, large-scale grain producers in the middle of Brazil would typically have um, a, a, an agronomist associated with their cooperative providing them with advice, whereas a small-scale subsistence farmer on a coastal region would be relying on the state uh, agricultural agency to provide that advice. Uh, a bit same in US. The US has the very strong land grant system, um, but even there in the Corn Belt, where there's big inputs provided by the private sector, the, the predominant form of advice for farmers tends to be agronomists associated with chemical resellers or seed distributors. When you move across to the Wheat Belt, by contrast, it tends to be public advisory service, public extension service officer. Denmark is another case in point which looks from the outside to have a private advisory service, but when you get a bit closer, most of the activities of that private advisory service revolve around uh, compliance requirements on Danish farmers. So they have to do a lot of reporting uh, to meet the requirements for their EU um, subsidies, and uh, a lot of the uh, uh, advisory service activity is helping farmers to fill in and meet those requirements. So. Um, it really does vary depending on where you go. What are the main conclusions of the research? The main conclusions of the research are that we have to recognise that we are now largely experiencing a private advisory service in Australia, but we still have a public research um, uh, service, so the universities and the CSIROs. So one of the big weaknesses in the Australian system is the linkage between the public research system on the one hand and the private advisory service which is the most efficient way to make contact with farmers. Um, what we haven't done is establish very good links between those two groups and so the recommendations in the report deal with how you establish better communication channels between um, a public sector uh, researcher for example and uh, an advisor on the ground, an agronomist who's talking to farmers, perhaps 30 to 50, on a regular basis. And, and that's re really where the challenge lies for Australia. How can people get hold of the report? 
The reports arising from this research are available through the Institute's website. They can be downloaded there or members are able to obtain copies of those research reports um, on the basis of their membership.